bones of upper limb each upper limb has 32 bones the bones contributed by both upper limb is 64 so each upper limb has 60 uh, 32 bones and bones contributed by both upper limb is 64 now scapula or the shoulder blade it is uh, in each upper limb there is one scapula one clavicle that is called as collar bone one humerus or the bone of arm radius and ulna that is the bones of forearm that is two carpal bones eight metacarpal bones five and phalanges 14 so let's count scapula one clavicle one two humerus one that is total three radius and ulna bones of forearm that is two three plus two five and then five plus eight that is eight of the carpal bones and eight plus five 8 plus 5 then 18 and 18 plus 14 that is 32 18 plus 14 that is 32 so the scapula clavicle humor is 3 radius and ulna 2 that is 5 metacarpal bones 5 that is 10 10 plus 8 of the carpal bones 18 and 18 plus 14 phalanges that is equal to 32 bones in each upper limb now clavicle now we will learn about clavicle as you can see in this diagram there is the clavicle scapula humerus ulna radius which would be pointing towards the thumb it should be on the thumb side radius is always present on the thumb side and ulna and the carpal bones metacarpal bones and phalanges so eight carpal bones five metacarpal bones and 14 phalanges bones and the radius one bone ulna one bone humerus one bone scapula one bone and clavicle one bone so total 32 limb uh, 32 bones are present in each upper limb next now we'll learn about each bone in detail now let's study about clavicle clavicle it is also called as the collar bone it is the shape and structure what is the shape and structure it is a long bone first of all clavicle is a long bone with slight s shaped curve so clavicle is a long bone with slight s shaped curve now where it is located so the clavicle is basically horizontal it is horizontally placed on the anterior side of the body so it is present in the anterior side of the body at the junction it is present at the junction of the root of neck and the trunk of our body so the clavicle clavicle is horizontally placed on the anterior side of the body at the junction of root of neck and the trunk of our body clavicle horizontally on the anterior side of the body at the junction of root of neck and trunk now the clavicle bone how it articulates so medial side or the towards the sternum medially with the sternum it articulates and the first rib cartilage so it articulates medially with the sternum and the first rib cartilage so clavicle articulates medially with the sternum and the first rib cartilage and laterally with the acromion process of the scapula so it articulates laterally with the acromion process of the scapula and the clavicle articulates laterally with the acromion process of scapula now clavicle it is a subcutaneous that is it is present below the cutaneous layer of our skin so it is subcutaneous it can be palpated throughout its entire extent it can be palpated throughout its entire extent now it is the only bony attachment between the trunk and the upper limb so the clavicle is the only bone that is present pre present between the trunk and the upper limb that is it connects the trunk and the upper limb now what is the functions of clavicle so first of all holds the upper limb away from the trunk for free, free movement that is holding and catching so it maintains a distance between the upper limb and the trunk for the free movement that is holding and catching now transmits weight of the upper limb to the axial skeleton it transmits the weight of the upper limb to the axial skeleton and it provides area for the attachment of muscles so clavicle will provide the area for the attachment of muscles so what are the functions of clavicle holds upper limb away from the trunk for a free movement that is holding and catching next transmits the weight of the upper limb to the axial skeleton and third it is it provides the surface uh, provides the area for the attachment of muscles next so what are the special features of clavicle the special features of clavicle are it is the only bone that lies horizontally it is the only bone that lies horizontally it has no medullary cavity medullary cavity is absent in clavicle it is subcutaneous throughout clavicle is subcutaneous throughout it is the first bone clavicle is the first bone to ossify between the fifth and the sixth week of the intrauterine life and it is the last bone to ossify at the 25 years of age so clavicle is the first bone to ossify between fifth and sixth week of intrauterine life and it is the last bone to ossify at the age of 25 years next it is the only long bone as you know clavicle is a long bone it it, uh, it is the only long bone to ossify in the membrane intramembranous ossification except its medial end that ossifies in the cartilage so it is the only long bone to ossify in the membrane except its medial end that ossifies in the cartilage 
it is the only long bone that have that ossifies by two primary centers of ossification and two secondary centers of ossification so two secondary centers of ossification that is generally present in long bone and uh, in long bone two centers of secondary ossification are present and one center of primary center of ossification is present but in the clavicle there are two primary centers of uh, ossification so it is only long bone that ossifies by the two primary center of ossification so it has total as how much ossification centers it has four ossification centers out of which two are primary centers of ossification and two are the secondary centers of ossification and it may be pierced through and by the cutaneous nerve so clavicle can be pierced through or by the cutaneous nerve now now we learn about the parts so the parts that is the clavicle if we see the clavicle it has two ends that is the medial end and the lateral end the medial end it is enlarged quadrilateral and articulates with the clavicular notch of the manubrium sternum so the medial lens it is enlarged quadrilateral and articulates with the clavicular notch of the manubrium sternum as you can see this is the clavicular notch of the manubrium process or manubrium process of the sternum so it is called as manubrium sternum and so the medial end the medial end it articulates with the clavicular notch of the manubrium sternum and the lateral end it is flattened above and downwards and articulates with the medial margin of acromion process so the flattened above and downwards lateral end is flattened above and downwards and articulates with the medial margin of acromion process medial margin of acromion process now the shaft of clavicle the shaft of clavicle is curved the first it is again divided into two parts that is the medial two, two third which is round and convex forwards medial two third is round and convex forwards and the lateral one third is flattened and concave forwards so the medial two third is round and it is convex forwards and the lateral one third is flattened from the above and below and it is concave forwards and next it has the inferior surface has small longitudinal groove in its middle one third so in middle one third of the shaft of clavicle there is a, in the inferior surface it has a small longitudinal groove so, sm uh, so the inferior surface of the shaft of clavicle it has in the middle one third it has a small longitudinal groove next now how can we say the how can we hold clavicle in an anatomical position so first of all the flattened end should be present on the lateral side the enlarged quadrilateral side should be present on the medial side the convexity the convexity of the medial two third and the concavity of its lateral one third should be maintained and should face forward the convexity of the medial two thirds and the concavity of the lateral one third should be maintained and face forward and the longitudinal groove in the middle third of the shaft should face inferiorly so the longitudinal groove in the middle third of the shaft of clavicle should face inferiorly so this is the anatomical position of clavicle next the joints formed by clavicle there are two joints formed by clavicle that is the acromion clavicular joint and the sternoclavicular joint so acromion clavicular joint as the name suggests it is joint present between the acromion process of scapula and the clavicle next so the oval facet on the lateral end articulates with the facet on the medial margin of acromion joint so the acromial clavicular joint it is an oval facet on the lateral end of the lateral end it's an oval facet present on the lateral end which articulates with the facet present on the medial margin of acromion joint and the sternoclavicular joints sternoclavicular joint its name suggests it articulates the clavicular clavicle articulates articulates with the sternum so the medial end the medial hand has a saddle shaped articular surface that articulates with the clavicular notch of the manubrium sternum and it is made up of white fibrocartilage and it is an example of saddle joint so sternoclavicular joint it is a medial end and has a saddle shaped articular surface which articulates with the clavicular notch of the manubrium sternum and it is a made up of white fibrocartilage and it is an example of saddle joint so sternoclavicular joint over next now we learn about the staff shaft so shaft as we know shaft is divided into lateral one third and the medial two third of the shaft lateral one third and the medial two third of the shaft so lateral one third so lateral one third has two surfaces the superior surface and the inferior surface two borders the anterior border and the posterior border the anterior border and the posterior border so the, let's learn about the superior surface the superior surface is present between the attachment of the deltoid muscle and the trapezius muscle the superior surface of the lateral one third of clavicle so as you can see this is the lateral one third so it is present between the junction so it is present between the deltoid muscle and the trapezius muscle so it is present between the deltoid muscle sorry uh, it is present between the deltoid muscle and the trapezius muscle it is present between the deltoid muscle and the trapezius muscle the superior surface of the lateral one third of the shaft of clavicle it is present between the deltoid muscle and the trapezius muscle next the inferior surface it has conoid tubercle and trapezoid ridge that provides attachment to the coracoclavicular ligament so 
the inferior surface of the lateral one third of the clavicle it has a conoid tubercle and a trapezoid ridge trapezoid ridge which provides the attachment to the coracoclavicular ligament next as you can see here it is the conoid tubercle the inferior surface has conoid tubercle and the trapezoid ridge extends forward and laterally from the conoid tubercle so the trapezoid ridge extends forward and laterally from the conoid tubercle next the borders of the lateral one third of the shaft so the borders of the lateral one third so the anterior border and posterior border are there so the anterior border anterior border as you can see it is concave forwards and uh, the it is gives the origin to the deltoid muscle it gives the origin to the deltoid muscle its anterior head so the lateral one third the anterior border of the lateral one third of the shaft of clavicle so the anterior border as you can see this is the anterior border anterior border of the lateral one third of the shaft of clavicle provides the it provides the origin it provides the origin to the deltoid muscle so as you can say the origin of deltoid muscle of the anterior head so deltoid muscle it is divided into three parts so the anterior head it is originates from the lateral one third lateral one third of the shaft of clavicle from the anterior surface or the anterior border and the posterior border the posterior border it is convex backwards posterior border border is convex backwards and inserted to the trapezius muscles as you can see here it is the posterior surface and here as you can see in the yellow highlighted area the trapezius muscles gets inserted so it provides the insertion to the trapezius muscles what provides the posterior border of the lateral one third of the shaft of clavicle provides the insertion for the trapezius muscles so the posterior posterior border of the lateral one third of the shaft of clavicle provides the uh, insertion of the trapezius muscle the anterior border of the lateral one third of the shaft of clavicle it provides the attachment for the anterior head of the deltoid muscle next the, now we have completed the lateral one third of the shaft of clavicle and now we will learn about the medial two third of the shaft of clavicle so it has also anterior surface posterior surface now and superior surface of the clavicle and inferior surface so two surfaces anterior no four surface sorry uh, four surface anterior surface posterior surface superior surface inferior surface now let's learn about anterior surface so anterior surface as you can see the medial two third of the shaft of clavicle it is convex forwards and the pectoralis major the clavicular head of the pectoralis major originates from the anterior surface of the medial two third of the shaft of clavicle so the pectoralis major the clavicular head the clavicular head of the pectoralis mus muscle originates from the medial anterior surface anterior surface of the medial two third of the clavicle shaft of clavicle so pectoralis major the clavicular head originates from the anterior surface of the medial two third of the shaft of clavicle the posterior surface the posterior surface it is concave backwards the posterior surface is concave backwards now the sternohyoid muscle the posterior surface. origin is the posterior surface near the medial end of the clavicle so as you can see the near the medial end of the clavicle in the posterior surface the sternohyoid muscle gets originated the sternohyoid muscle is the origin it gets originated in the posterior surface near the medial end of the clavicle so it sternohyoid muscle gets originated in the posterior surface near the medial end of the clavicle now as we learned about anterior surface and the posterior surface now we will learn about the superior surface the superior surface of the medial two third of the shaft of clavicle so the superior surface the superior surface it gives rise to the sternocleidoid mastoid muscle so the clavicular head of the sternocleidoid mastoid muscle originates from the medial half it originates from the medial half of the superior surface of the medial two third of the shaft of clavicle so so the clavicular head of the sternocleidoid mastoid muscle originates from the medial half of the superior surface of the shaft of clavicle now the inferior surface the inferior surface inferior surface has a subclavius muscle inserted into the subclavian groove so as you can see the inferior surface inferior surface it has subclavius muscle that gets inserted into the subclavian groove present in the inferior surface of the clavicle and clavipectoral fascia clavipectoral fascia is attached to the margins of the subclavian groove the clavipectoral fascia is attached to the margins of the subclavian groove and the nutrient foramen of the clavicle is located on the lateral end of the subclavian groove so nutrient foramen of clavicle is located on the lateral end of the subclavian groove now 
as you can see it has two ends we, uh, we talked about it earlier clavicle a sternal end that is the medial end and the acromial end that is the lateral end and now we will learn about the clinical aspects clinical aspects of clavicle so fracture of clavicle it is the most commonly fractured bone of body it is the most commonly fractured bone of body fracture occurs at the junction between the lateral one third and the medial two third so the fracture occurs between the lateral one third and the medial two third why only this spot because it is the weakest side the curvature of clavicle meet at this point and the transmission of forces of the clavicle occurs from the scapula to the clavicle so why only the junction between the lateral one third and the medial two third gets most commonly fractured because it is the weakest side the curvatures of clavicle meet at this point and the transmission of forces of clavicle occurs from the scapula to the clavicle now the second clinical aspect is clavicular dysostosis that is non-union of the two primary centers of ossification that is so what happens if the, there is non-union of the two primary centers of ossification the medial and the lateral part remains separated so the medial and the lateral part remains separated in the clavicular dysostosis now the cleidocranial dysostosis the cleidocranial dysostosis that is a partial or complete absence of the clavicle associated with the defective defective ossification of the skull bones so cleidocranial dysostosis that is the partial or complete absence of the clavicle so it is a partial or ab complete absence of the clavicle associated with the defective ossifications of the skull bone and this is a x-ray of fracture of clavicle so as you can see here in the blue arrow the clavicle is fractured thank you